I'm going to tie a high vis parachute ant and I'm starting off with a size 14 dry fly hook in the vise and the thread that I'm going to use is an 8 aught red. I'm going to make this a rust color. So I'll get started by just uh, wrapping my thread to about the two-third mark in the hook shank, trim off the excess. The post that I'm going to use uh, is a yellow Antron yarn, so I'm just going to take a section of that off. This is one of my favorite post materials. Um, so I've taken off a couple inch sections, and to do this, all that I'm going to uh, all that I'm going to do is I'm going to bend that yarn over, and then situate it right on top. I'll take a couple of angled wraps on either side just to get it just to get it started. Now that I have that, I can start to make my wraps up the post. And this typically works better when you don't have the camera in front of you. So I'll just start making my wraps up the post when I begin. I'm taking a couple uh, couple of turns gingerly and then I'll start to tighten them tighten them down when I get to the top then I can wrap in front and behind just to give it an anchor point and I'll take it up one more time and back down and the height of your post you just want to make sure that you're going to clear any material that you're going to tie in around the post and then also how how much hackle you you want to tie in. Um, so I'm just going to give this kind of a rough cut and come back through and trim that later. But you can see what that looks like from the top and underneath. Uh, one thing that I like to do with most of my patterns that are going to have a post is I just advance the thread down to the to the point in the hook. Is just put a, a small drop of Zappa Gap on here, or if you want to use just a, a head cement, and that just It'll make that real, real stiff uh, when you when you want to start applying your your hackle to it. So just take my bodkin and kind of smooth that smooth that out. With Zappa Gap, typically less is less is more, or crazy glue, whatever you like to use. So at, as you've probably seen, if you've been watching these videos, I'm going to kick with UV uh, ice dub, and this is going to be no different. So I'm going to make a, a rusty. Uh, or use my ice dub, the UV rust color, to make this fly. So I'm going to just take a pinch of this out, and I'll start to create my dubbing noodle. And I want to make sure this is as tight as can be. And with most dubbing materials, if you want to get it uh, a real tight dubbing noodle, if you apply some moisture to it, uh, you can get it pretty tight. So now I'll just start advancing my thread down and my dubbing and I take this beyond the bend in the hook and I do that because I want to have kind of that that curved shape to the butt section here. And again as I continue to wrap I'll make some twists and I'm going to take one more pinch just to finish that up. And when I'm satisfied with the look, then I'm just going to advance my thread up towards the post. And all that I'm doing with that thread is just covering the covering the hook shank. I'm not going to apply any dubbing any dubbing to it. So once I'm happy with the shape of the butt and I've advanced the thread up, now I'm going to take just one more tiny pinch of dubbing and I'm just going to start to dub that front portion of the ant and that's going to be just behind the post. And I'm not too concerned if there's additional Zappa Gap that comes out when I do this. Uh, that's going to help hold some of that hold some of that together 
as well as when I add my hackle. So I'm going to add this parachute part and that's going to be a furnace hackle that I'm going to use. I try to match, kind of match the color of the body. So I've taken a section of furnace hackle. I'm just going to clean off the clean off the stem, give it a cut, get a good tie-in point, and tie that into the front. And again, notice I'm tying it in front of the in front of the post. All right, now I can just start to wrap this hackle through. And I typically like to start from the from the bottom. It'll push that push that hackle up. <clears throat> and the amount of wraps you take will be how well it, it flows, at least at, at least at first. Um, and I'll hold it down and I'm just gonna cut underneath my hackle there two times to make sure I get that locked in and then I can take some more wraps back towards the post until I can trim off the excess. Careful not to cut your thumb. All right, so the last piece then I can I can dub the remainder of the of the amp. And this is just going to be the the head portion. So, get another small pinch of of dubbing on there. And I'll pull all the hackle back. And if you need to clean up any sections, and then I'll build out just a just a tiny head. A couple of whip finishes here. Tighten that down, and I can trim off the excess. Now, a lot of times when you do uh, when you tie parachute patterns, you'll notice as you're as you're doing it, some of the hackle gets kind of out of out of place. One trick, if it starts to slide up the post, that you can do to manage it, especially with this antron, all you need to do is if you split it, it'll help push that back down the back down the post, and then you can play play with the hackle to make sure it sits just how you'd like it. And then finally, just cut the cut the post to the desired height, and you're all set. So that is my high vis parachute amp.